The Apple iPhone 16 Pro Max is bigger and more powerful than ever. It has a beautiful screen, an excellent camera array, and new camera controls that could change how you approach iPhone photography. Power and battery life both get a boost to make this the biggest screen smartphone of your dreams. Apple Intelligence offers some useful and intriguing features, but it's not yet the thing that will or should drive upgrades. Still, if you have been holding on to an iPhone 2, 12 or 13 Pro Max, this is probably the moment for a big screen upgrade. I know everyone wants to talk about Apple intelligence, but it's the changes to the core iOS 18 platform that will have the biggest impact on your iPhone 16 Pro Max day-to-day -day use. Photos, for instance, has gotten a huge overhaul and one that I'm not entirely sure makes it better. It's a situation of who moved my cheese. As many of your core features may have shifted or been replaced, the Photos app now defaults to search and collections which might throw people who are expecting to see their photo library. Still, if they get used to using search for some natural language queries that yield useful image results, they might be pleasantly surprised. The iOS interface is now more customizable and if you want, you can leave spaces in your app grids. You still can't place an app icon in a space that, say, straddles two spaces in the invisible grid, but I think people will appreciate this new level of flexibility. Apple seems a bit obsessed with summarization. Summaries exist in writing tools and in the new Safari, which has a slightly hidden highlights feature. Look for a tiny hamburger menu on the left side of the address bar. You can use that to turn it on and it will take, for example, a lengthy New Yorker article about Ronald Reagan and condense the thousands of words into a paragraph summary impressive. So, I worry that such a boil down might leave out important nonsense. There's even a new passwords app that consolidates and surfaces all the password feature app has previously hidden in features like Keychain. Now you have an easy to access app to manage some times confusing password and security word. One of my favorite new iOS 18 features is Math Notes. Inside Notes, you can scribble any question and when you put an equal sign at the end of it, Math Notes automatically solves it and writes the answer in what will look just like your own penmanship. It's a smart bit of machine learning. None of this is as sexy as Apple intelligence, but this and the myriad of other changes coming with iOS 18 might be more readily practical than what you can currently do with Apple's AI efforts. Apple's 13-year-old digital assistant has burst out of its floating bubble and now when you summon it, takes over the whole screen. I switched between calling Siri by name and using a long press on the power button to call it and each time, the entire screen was encased in a beautiful multicolor glow. The display almost appears to flex when you press that button and when you make your request, the screen pulses in response. Siri really seems more alive than ever. This, too, might be the most exciting part of the update Apple intelligence features that give Siri access to information about you on the phone to make its responses more contextually relevant are not here yet, nor are app insights that might help dig into applications to enable features and actions. Instead, we get a Siri that is somewhat better at handling the ahs and ums that sometimes happens when you are trying to craft a Siri prompt. I found that Siri can understand some confused talk, although if you are nearly incoherent, Siri will be lost too. Siri did well on some question and was effective at opening the FaceTime camera when I said I wanted to take a selfie. It also did well when I asked how I could share my Wi-Fi password returning a concise step-by-step -step guide. One other nice Siri update is the text to Siri. All it takes is three taps on the bottom of the screen to open a Siri window in which you can type in your prompt. It's a nice, discreet way of getting the answer or help you need. 
Writing tools which you can find when you type text in notes, emails or messages offers to make your writing better in a variety of ways. I am a confident writer and communicator in email and messaging so AI assistance in these tasks doesn't appeal to me. There are 2 million who feel otherwise and may find these tools useful. I noticed how while writing tools offers to make your text more professional, concise and friendly. It does a stellar job of never losing a misconstructing the meaning of your original text. Photos is where Apple intelligence shines. The new cleanup option in edit is effective at removing unwanted objects from phone. When I opened a photo and tapped the cleanup eraser icon, it immediately offered a remove a few people from the background of my photo. I wanted to keep them so I choose an object I wanted to remove drawing over it. Precision is not a necessity. I drew over parts of it and clean up identified the complete object. When I took a picture of my wife at an outdoor restaurant, I noticed that you could still see all the cars parked behind her. I used cleanup to remove them one by one. It did a good job. In all Apple intelligence shows early promise but compared Google Gemini and Galaxy AI, it seems a bit limited. Siri still doesn't have that open LLM feel where you could ask it almost any question or solve any problem. There is no AI image generation, not even the promised gen emojis. It's still an English only tool and the promised third party integration with ChatGPT and potentially Gemini have yet to materialize. It's a good effort, but this version of Apple Intelligence is not the one that will spark a billion upgrades. While Apple hasn't radically changed the iPhone's camera array, there are enough changes in hardware, software and image processing, along with the aforementioned camera control button to make the imaging system feel fresh and new. On paper, we have just one notable megapixel upgrade, the 48 megapixel ultrawide camera, which will not only improve wide-angle shots but has a measurable impact on macro quality. Still even though Apple didn't squeeze a much higher pixel count into the main camera, it did upgrade the sensor and is promising much faster shutter speeds. And the autofocus is now enhanced with dual autofocus sensors. These are the kinds of incremental changes that should improve both the experience of using the quality delivered by the main camera sensor but they are also hard to measure. More on that in a bit. The 12 megapixel 5x optical zoom is essentially unchanged from last year's iPhone 15 Pro Max. The biggest news here is found not on this phone but on its little brother, the iPhone 16 Pro, which also gets the Tetra Prism lens. Last year's Pro model was stuck with a just 3x optical zoom camera. Similarly, unchanged is the 12 megapixel FaceTime camera on the front. Here are some camera samples of iPhone 16 Pro Max. By every metric, the iPhone 16 Pro Max's new A18 Pro SoC is a beast. It outperforms the A17 Pro and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in most benchmarks. While Apple isn't backing the CPU with as much memory as you might find in, for instance, a Google Pixel 9 or Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, the iPhone 16 Pro Max and its A18 Pro chip make good use of the 8GB it has. 
that the iPhone 16 Pro Max is essentially a mini computer in your pocket should surprise no one. Apple Silicon has provided ample power for everything from everyday productivity tasks to 4K video editing and AAA console gaming. The A18 Pro is no different, but in this case, we have an even larger canvas on which to enjoy its benefits. I'm not sure I could find a task this phone couldn't handle. If I have one criticism, it's that the phone does seem to get a bit warm during, for instance, gameplay and video editing in CapCut. I don't know if this is the graphite covered aluminum substructure more efficiently delivering heat from the chip to the body or the phone overworking the good news is that this does not adversely impact performance or battery life call quality was good and i am pleased to see that this is a now a future leaning platform with wi-fi 7 support there's also bluetooth 5.3 support and second generation ultra wideband it helps in my find my app which i used when i purposely misplaced my new airports 4. in the us the iphone is now eSIM only which i like although some people miss the physical sim card i appreciate the ease of switching eSIMs from one phone to other and how easily the iphone 16 pro max lets you switch between multiple eSIM numbers on the iphone 16. the iphone 16 pro max delivered some of the best future labs battery train results i have seen we got an average 16 hours of battery life on our tests and anecdotally I saw between 14 and 17 hours depending on activity. That's impressive. Apple is finally supporting QI2 wireless charging technology and provided me with a new QI2 supporting MagSafe charger and a 30 watt charge adapter. The iPhone 16 lineup ships with a 60 watt capable USB-C cable but no charging adapter. Using those two accessories, I recharged the iPhone 16 Pro Max at 44% in 30 minutes. Apple claimed 50% in 30 minutes, so this is pretty close. A full charge took about 2 hours. One thing not a lot of people know is that with a standard USB-C cable, you can charge your AirPods or Apple Watch of the iPhone. The iPhone 16 Pro Max have everything we have come to expect in a year-over-year -year upgrade even without Apple intelligence. The 6.9-inch iPhone 16 Pro Max have a slew of upgrades including a good battery life, outstanding photo and video chops and iOS 18. The iPhone 16 Pro Max are excellent phones worthy of a spot in your pocket if you can afford them.